What's up guys, it's Chachi Power here with Rocket Punch Army. Uh, say hello to my little friend uh, Power Glide. Maybe he'll say hello back, go ahead. Or maybe not, since he's a toy, you silly bastards. This review is not about this Power Glide, but I do want to start with this one because um, this is one of the only surviving members of my G1 family of Transformers toys. And it's in great shape. Um, I wanted to show you this because I happened to pick up a Power Glide related figure. Now. I really do prefer the look of his G1 version. I know there's other Power Glides out there. There's uh, big ones, small ones, and everything. But I do want one that looks very G1-ish. Lately, if you've been wanting uh, stuff that's G1 accurate or cartoon accurate or you know comic accurate, uh, Hasbro hasn't been the place to go to uh, to find those things. Lately, it's been third parties, uh, as is the case right now. So here is my wild child explorer power glide third party figure from x transbots all right uh, notice it says x1w okay i didn't notice this when i ordered it um, i just assumed it was power glide which it technically is um, before i get into what i'm talking about let's just turn it around there is a coming soon for a tyrant 3 x3 which is obviously galvatron so i can't wait to see that down here you get the spec strength Intelligence, speed, endurance, rank, courage, firepower, and skill. Okay, and then you get his little quote here. Violence keeps me alive. This is a 2011 release by X Transbots. And it's got a little bit of uh, information of him here. So, let's get into the figure now. So, I ordered this, like I said. I got it the other day. When I opened it, I was pleasantly, uh, actually not pleasantly surprised at first. I was a little bit... Uh, upset but uh I'll, I'll show you what i'm talking about so i opened this up and he was white so i'm like what the hell is going on so i didn't realize when i ordered it that this is a x1w w obviously stands for white but i did not know that since there were no pictures of the figure just the box but then i noticed it has decepticon faction logos which uh turned everything right around now i like it uh it's white white always looks good on vehicles so we're going to go ahead and open this up and uh, see what's going on and see how he compares to the G1 figure. So once you have everything opened, you'll see he's got a nice little plastic tray. And when I say nice, I just mean like it's just normal. And then he's also got a baggie here with, uh, looks like a knife here. We'll check that out in a second. Instructions and then a little character card here, which we're going to go ahead and check out really quick. All right, so we got the card. All right, so the spec card here is full color has all the information again the specs down here and it's got a little comic I guess all right and it's got his card here that shows him in full color which is white so and then the instructions which are pretty reminiscent to standard transformers just a lot smaller and you'll see the uh, instructions are quite simple they, they look like uh, hand-drawn pictures here so we're gonna go ahead and check out the figure and then we'll do the transformation okay so I'm just gonna take him out of his tray so after about half an hour of uh, taking twisty ties off there's only two but they're twisted like a million times around I could have just snipped it but I always want to keep it um, intact just in case I need to put them away let's get down to the nitty-gritty shall we um, right off the bat holding it in my hand you know for you people that are uh, I guess resistant to third party a lot of people have started off with some bad uh, third party figures and gave up on them this so far feels uh, very solid the plastic feels hefty it's like a thick good feeling plastic uh, definitely feels better than say like uh, something from Hasbro that would be about this size you know it, it has a nice heft so the plastic definitely feels like something that's high quality now, only time's going to tell, okay, um, since I haven't even transformed him yet. So we're going to go ahead and um, check out some of the details here. So you'll see he has a lot of panel lines. So there's obviously uh, a lot of moving pieces. If we look down here, um, again, a lot of panel lining. Not everything closes tightly, which is either a sign of bad molding, third-party quality, or what have you. Um, Let's go ahead and put this together with this guy. So he kind of looks like a really miniature version of the G1 counterpart. Now, I understand these are two different characters, okay? 
but this is the only one I have to compare them to. And you'll see these fins back here do move since these do become part of the articulated figure. All right. Um, as far as gimmicks, you do have landing gear, which is really nice. You want to pull this out like so, straight down. Then you want to grab the other two, bring those down, and there you go with the landing gear. Now, that's pretty much it for gimmicks on the airplane side, so I'll give you a couple seconds to look at the rest of it. All right, Decepticon logos on the wings. Painted detail there, not too shabby. And the black face on the bottom. Now, transformation seems simple enough, pretty much the same as G1 as far as these wings are concerned. Bring these up, and you'll already see you are forming most of Powerglide there. Now, obviously, you're going to want to put the landing gear in, if you haven't so already. Then pull out the halves here, you'll see it splits completely there. And then bring this up and over. Do the same for the other side. Now, help it along, because uh, there are, uh, on some people's releases, there are stress marks where the pins go. Uh, the stress marks might be from just the pins going in, but you know, definitely want to help it along uh, since this is rather tight. Don't want to break anything. Now when you go to bring this down, if any of them seem to pop back out like that, um, you want to check the where these you want to check this rod here where it starts getting round and check for any flash there. If there's any flash, just push it off with an X-Acto knife or something sharp. Just push it right off. It's usually in the corner here and that should allow you to close it up rather nicely. And then come around to the other side of the figure, spin the head around if you want, doesn't matter. Hold this open and pull this out here. Bring this down, pull the little gun out that's uh, hidden in here in the compartment and you'll notice there's a heart back there, pretty cool. So this cockpit piece you want to spin around and inside, so you want to hide that pull this up then close that I think now we can finally push that back in like so this is the part where it gets fun you bring this out bring this down like so uh, spin this around bring it down over the leg like so and do the same for the other side bring that down out spin around and in now we're not done with the legs just yet you want to open up the booster thing here and then uh, wrap it around like so, making sure it encloses over this tab here. Bring this around like that, and you'll see the leg cleans up rather nicely compared to just having that there like that. You're going to want to do the same exact thing for this side. And once you have the legs all taken care of, obviously the arms now. So bring this down, just uh, get it the right way here. And the other one. And this one seems to pop off rather easily on mine might have to heat the plastic up and get it to squeeze the ball joint a little bit better but it still holds on rather well wild child explorer here and go ahead and give it some weapons we got uh, two guns here one smaller one which, which goes in the chest and a little bit bigger one put the gun on one and the knife on the other so there we have uh, Decepticon Wild Child Explorer slash Power Glide. Guess you guys want to check out the articulation, which is not bad. You got the head. All it does is swivel around. Uh, it will do a 360. Okay. Uh, the shoulders, you have them on ball joints. You can see the ball joint there. Got the elbow also on ball joints. A little bit limited depending on which way you're holding it. And again, that pops off sometimes. Uh, there is no wrist. Okay. There uh, is no waist joint. But check this out, it does have Gundam style skirts there. Allows you to bring the leg forward, knee down, and then you have a pivoting ankle that's also on a ball joint. So overall, very nice figure. Um, it's a little on the pricey side, it's about 50 bucks, but it's definitely a very nice toy. I'm not gonna say it's solid. You'll see the arms are popping off, and, and the ball joint might not even be a perfectly round ball joint. You'll see here, it just tends to pop up, so. That's a sign of a non-round ball joint. Uh, but overall, very nice. I don't know if I would display with the weapons. A little bit silly there. Popping off all the time. And the wings do kind of separate from these tabs rather easily if you're moving the arm. So always hold that in. And very nice overall. Very happy. Um, I definitely want to look for the regular red Powerglide version. But this will do for now. Quite happy. Again, it's a third-party toy. 
uh, but it does uh, feel like it's made rather well. Some exposed screws like down here. It's a little bit strange, but very nice. Got this one from Ace's Toy Store, so uh, check that out. And until next time, guys, bye-bye. Uh,